everybody, a couple of days ago I got access to Zapier tables, so you can get access to the Zapier beta features if you sign up for the Zapier beta program, and then you'll get early access to these features. You can test, play around and have a look. So released a couple of days ago is Zapier tables. So I wanted to just give you my first impression, show you around, um, have a look at what it can do, just set up and play with a little scenario um, so we can have an idea of what's coming and what we might use it for. So let's just have a dive in and have a look at Zapier tables. Okay, so I'm logged into my Zapier here and if we come down the side menu here, we have Zapier tables. So we have Zapier table beta, as I mentioned, and what we can do, we can create tables with this. Uh, or we can push information into tables. We can trigger automations with data in tables. So think about this as maybe a kind of spreadsheet or Airtable um, built into Zapier. So you can hold your data, you can manage data um, just as you would in Airtable, Google Sheets or something like that. Um, but then you can use the power of Zapier to automate based on the information in those tables and the changes that happen in those tables. So let me just show you um, a scenario. Well, first of all, let me just show you um, how to create a table. So we can create a blank table by just clicking on here. And we'll just give it a name and a description. Or we can also pull in information, create a table using a CSV and just pull all the information in there as well. So if we look at what we have, then uh, let's have a look at this attendance. So this is a table I've created and I've created a few fields in there. And so we have these fields. We have an email address, name, we have a tick box for attended. We can click and add a new field and we can give it a name. And then we have these types of fields that we can use as well. So there's a few in there, probably more to come. Alignment icon as well, interesting. So, you know, you can search for um, different icons. So we have Calendly, Google Calendar. So as we have in here in the email one, we just got this little Gmail icon just to help you identify columns, I guess, quickly. Um, so let's close that. What we can also do, if we look at the settings on these fields, we can lock and unlock fields, and we can create zaps directly from the fields as well. So if we look at this here, we have the name, we have the email address, and think of this as an attendance form. So somebody signs up for a course, and then the tutor has to do the attendance, and so they tick these boxes. So what we can do, we can click on this field here and we can create a zap. And what that's going to do is create a zap and the trigger of the zap is going to be based on this table and this column. Um, so if we look at viewed connection zap, so I've already done this on here. I've just gone through and connected it. And we can see we have a zap linked to this field here. And if we edit that zap, we can see in here, we just move this to edit. So when you edit Zap, it doesn't actually edit Zap. It just takes you to it. And then we're going to edit the draft here. So let's have a look at the um, events that we can have with a table as a trigger. So it can be triggered by updating of records, uh, when a button is clicked, a uh, new record, updated record. And in this instance, it's just updated record. And the trigger is going to be the table is the attendance table, which we just looked at, and the trigger field is attended here. So when that box is ticked. So it's going to trigger, and what we're going to do is just going to do some um, passing that data to Airtable. So if we just go back again then, so and we look at this, what we can also do, we can share this table. So if we click on share, now we can share it if you have teams. So if you have a, a team plan in Zapier, you can share it with people within your team. If you don't, you can also share it with anybody. So anybody with the link, basically. And you can give them view only or edit. And you can just create it. And then you'll have this URL that you can use to send to them. And then they can click on it and they can get into here. So when they click and access the table, they can make changes to that table and they can add records. But what you can do, as I showed you earlier, you can lock fields. So Let's imagine we want to send them the, the the link to the table so they can do the attendance, but we don't want them changing this data here. We can just block it, and then all they can do is tick these boxes, which is what we want, okay? So that's the kind of trigger side of things. If we look at what we can do in, um, in action, so basically 
creating tables, adding data into these tables on Zapier as well. So imagine you have um, like a tally form or something like that, where you're taking uh, registrations for an event, and then we can take the data from those registrations, put them into um, tables, and then at the end of the event, somebody could come in and tick the attendance. So we just have a look as well. So let's just go to, um, let me just find where I can access this. If I click on Zaps, yeah, so I can see there are two Zaps associated with this table. So this is the one we just looked at, and then this is another one. So let's just edit this again. So what this one is doing is taking information from Airtable. So when we add information into a record in Airtable, it's then going to create that record in Zapier tables. So if we just edit this again, we can see the actions we have as well. So let's just go here and look at the events. So what we can do with actions with Zapier tables, we can create records, we can create tables, we can update, and we can find and search. And then they have this continue zap button click. This, as far as I can tell, is um, you can have a zap run and then wait for a button to be clicked in tables to continue. So I'm not too sure. I need to try that out, but that's the impression I get from that. This zap will run until this step and then wait for the button to be clicked to continue. So it's a kind of a pause, maybe like a double approval or something like that. Um, so they're the things you can do. So basically we have a zap now that's going to take information from this table, air table base, and then it's going to put it into Zapier tables. So let me just show you how that works. So let's have a, a new registrant register here. Um, so we've added a record in. This person is going to attend the event. And so what should happen is if we refresh this, that zap should run shortly and it will add John into here. So we can see now the Zap has run and it's added John into this table. So now after the event, we could just come in here and somebody could have the link to that, maybe get that link emailed to them to, to fill out the attendance. And then you just tick this box. So a couple of things you can do when you tick this box, if we just change this to here, if you look here, I think it is, or maybe settings, yeah. So what we can do, we can specify whether when we tick the box, the automation runs automatically, or we can have it as pending, and then it will wait for you to click uh, before it sends it. So I've got it to automatic. And so what should happen when I tick this box to say John attended, then what should happen almost immediately is in Airtable, here we go, the, the record is updated to attend. So that's because we're just doing a search to find this person in here and update him. So what you could also do is you could create filters. So once that box has been ticked and updated, then you could just hide it so it can't be um, accessed again. Um, so that's quite useful. Um, I think I think that's about it. So there's quite a few use cases for this. I can see it being really useful and also if they have something like forms on top of that where you can enter data or somebody can enter data via a form. So I know that Zapier interfaces is coming. So I can see that this is probably going to link in there where you can have an interface for people to access tick boxes, press buttons and trigger workflows. So uh, first impression, yeah, I can see very useful. I'm sure over time this will grow, be a bit more richer. There'll be more things you can do. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for it. If you're interested, like I say, in signing up for the Zapier Betas, then just do a do a search for Zapier Beta. You can sign up for the program, and uh, you can get access to these kind of features. Hope that was useful. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.